inspirational, uplifting, altogether good. The Good News, Franklin County Schools. Welcome to WFCS Radio, the Good News Franklin County Schools podcast. The Good News Franklin County Schools podcast was created to share the amazing work taking place within our district as we highlight all things inspirational, uplifting, and all together good. I am your host, Dwayne McIntosh. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I am joined uh, by the one and only Mrs. Carissa Armstead. Y'all give it up for her today. Hey. <laughs> Krista, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for um, allowing us to have you today. I know you're doing amazing things. So let's let's jump right into it. Um, The reason you were on the radar is I saw you in a newspaper. I saw you all over social media as well. And actually, we've been talking for the past couple of weeks to trying to figure out how we can get you on this podcast because you were recently uh, one of five, correct, recipients to receive the Governor Cooper, um, well, the governor's Educator Discovery Award. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'm so thankful to receive this, and it'll be great to be able to use this to make me a better teacher here in Franklin County. So how did you hear about this uh, grant? Like, did it, you just knew about it already, or you, were you searching for grants and this popped up? How did you figure find out about this? Yeah, to be honest, I had known about this for a while, okay. but it seemed like too much work, and it was intimidating to apply, um, my principal had forwarded the emails to us every year when this would open up. And okay. finally I decided, okay, I'm going to write it down on my PDP, my professional development plan that I'm going to apply. <laughs> I made a commitment <laughs> that I was going right. to apply okay. this year. So. And so what was your reaction? How, did, how were you notified and what was your reaction to that notification? Well, another, to be honest, moment. Um, I at first did not open the email because it said congratulations that's all it said you thought it was a spam yes i thought it was a spam (laughs) so i did not open the email and then you heard one of those (laughs) records crash moments (laughs) yes um and then i think i had heard from someone else that like oh congratulations for the grant really (laughs) and so um yeah at first i didn't realize i had gotten do you have any idea how many people apply I actually don't. Okay. Um, it does seem to be a good number yeah. because you have to make a video to apply, and therefore those videos are on YouTube. <clears throat> you can make it unlisted, but you can go and see other people's videos. So tell us about the video. I'm, I'm intrigued now. Yeah, so um, I did make a little bit of a script, but um, this particular grant, one of the things that they're looking for is work-based education. So not just textbook knowledge, mm-hmm. but how can... Um, students be more prepared for the workforce. Mm. Um, And so one big focus of the professional development that I'm going to, because this is a grant for teachers to have professional development, is going to be really focused. It's a science teacher's training. Okay. But it's going to be focused a lot on communication, collaboration, critical thinking, um, more than just textbook chemistry knowledge. This is a chemistry training, but it's meant to go a lot deeper. And I pulled the press release directly from the governor's office. It says, Carissa Armstead, a science and social studies teacher at Franklin County Early College High School in Franklin County, will be attending the modeling workshop in chemistry presented by the American Modeling Teachers Association in summer 2023. This workshop provides a new approach to teaching STEM that engages students by emphasizing collaboration, critical thinking, communication, and creativity. This training is closely aligned with the next generation science standards and will allow Armstead to make a significant change in the way students interact with chemistry by turning them into real scientists that construct, test, and analyze models to further their understanding of different scientific kinds. Saps, we gotta, yeah. <laughs> we gotta give it up for that. There, that was a mouthful just to get through that. So, all right, so that's jam packed. Break that down for me. So, a little bit. What are you kind of expecting from this workshop? Yeah. So, um, modeling workshop and people. how, and, and also how do you? Yeah. What do you think would be some takeaways to pull back to your classroom? Mm-hmm. Um, modeling workshop people, please don't come after me, but (laughs) 
someone at some point gave me a PDF from their training from like 2004. Okay. And I had tried to kind of get through it because I could see that it's very hands-on mm -hmm. and um, it's involving writing, like things beyond just, okay, memorize periodic mm. table, like surface level knowledge. Um, but there's a lot of experimentation and um, having students discover things on their own. Mm. So I think I'm going to take away really a whole new way of teaching chemistry um, and a more complete knowledge of it because I was trying to figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. And because um, I actually don't have an education degree, I have a science degree. I came in as a lateral entry gotcha. teacher. So um, I took classes. Franklin County Schools helped to pay for those classes. Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> shout out to Franklin County Schools, <laughs> right. HR. Yeah. Um, absolutely. But. You know, so I've kind of learned a lot by doing, and I mm -hmm. think a lot of students also benefit from learning by doing. Absolutely, and so that's what I'll be taking away from so, this. Yeah, workshop. so you'll be you'll be actually in action in that workshop, and mm -hmm. so and so tell us a little bit about the early college model because it's different than a traditional high school setting, and so what makes that different and and uh, advantageous for your students? Yeah, definitely, and every early college is a little bit different. Um, our particular early college here in Franklin County was started by a grant with the Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Okay. And our primary focus is actually first-generation college students and students that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to go to college because we're actually located on the uh, Franklin campus of Vance Granville Community Vance College. Vance Granville, that's correct, yep. And... Um, yeah, so the students don't have to commute from their high school to the community college. We're right there. They just walk over to take both high school and college classes at the same time. So they're able nice. to graduate high school with an associate's degree. Nice. Shout out to early college in that yeah. process. So you mentioned this a little bit just a second ago that you do not have it. You didn't have an education degree. You have a science degree and then you got your educational education credentials added on. So what what sparked your interest to want to become an educator? Because I know last year, you're a great educator, by the way. Educator, by the way. You, you. Last year, you were uh, the teacher of the year for Franklin County Early College. Give it up. Thank you. And so doing amazing things. What sparked that interest? Did you know that or just you you had a fork in a row and was like, I'm going to try this path? How did that come about? Yeah, it was a winding path. I actually was a substitute teacher in college. Okay. And I already look young. I'm about to be 29, <laughs> and I still get mistaken for a student. <laughs> so you can only imagine me being actually 19. Right. <laughs> you know, or 20. Wow. Um, and that scared me away. My mentor at the time said, I really don't think you should sub because then you're not going to want to be a teacher. Here I am. Wow. It took some time to come back. But um, whenever I was subbing, actually, my favorite school and class that I subbed in was a class for teen parents. Mm. And it was just students that wanted to get the work done and make a change in their family line, you know, to be able to provide for their, yeah. yeah, to be able to pr provide for their kids in the next generation. And that inspired me, honestly, even though I didn't come right into the classroom after that, I had a few years working, um, for the city of Raleigh actually. Okay. Um, but I started tutoring chemistry and that kind of helped me get my feet wet a little nice. bit and I, Came so, in. how many years in education is this for you? This is my fifth with Franklin County Schools. F fifth year, and is that all five years been at the early college and high right. school? Wow, what grades do you teach? I and you know you mentioned in the press release science and social studies teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I started off as just science. Mm -hmm. My first year, I taught twelfth through ninth grade, um, but over time, things have just shifted as laws have changed of which classes do they need to graduate so now I primarily teach the juniors with economics and personal finance okay. and I teach the seniors with chemistry nice yeah. nice nice good stuff good stuff <laughs> thank you so um as far as grant writing was this your first time writing a grant have you you done other, other grants before I actually have um and this is where I would really encourage other teachers to just give it a try okay like it can feel intimidating but 
it, I tell this to the students because I teach the seniors mm -hmm. with scholarships. If you don't apply, you'll never know. That's right. And there is money that goes unclaimed when people do not apply. That's right. So I have also gotten the Wake Electric Bright Ideas Grant. Okay. I just got my Promethean board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give it up. Okay. <laughs> I just got that like in the last couple of weeks. Mm hmm and I've also in the past gotten grants from United Way to take students on field trips. We have went to nice. Morehead Planetarium, um, and we've done a lot of cool stuff with that. So team. how do you discover these grants? Like, like, do they just come across your path? You see emails, billboards, social media, or are you, are you scouring the net for them? How does it happen? Yeah, typically I do get an email at some point. Um, either the principal maybe will forward me or somehow mm -hmm. I got on an email list at some point. But mm -hmm. those are some of the main way ones I'd recommend teachers to look for is look for United Way. They do a lot of fundraising and want to give it back. Mm -hmm. Novazymes also has some grants. Um, Wake Electric, the Bright Ideas Grant, and then um, the Educators Discovery Award too. Um, but... What I'd encourage teachers to do is either sit down with somebody else. There's probably someone in your school who has written a grant before. That's how I got started. Teachers, listen. Carissa Armstead. That, I guess you're Teacher right. at <laughs> Early College High School, grant writer extraordinaire, <laughs> is available. Her email address is, no, I won't give her you. That's fine. <laughs> put it in the description. It can, and like she said, if you don't ask, you never know. That's so right. it couldn't hurt if you need some assistance. And and I'm sure there's others in the district as well that would be helpful. And even, even folks here in district office can help you with those grants. But, yeah, like you said, don't be afraid because you never know the possibilities until you try. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and once you've done your first one, it doesn't it doesn't scare you after that. You know, um, a, a lot of the stuff that I had written at first or you know, that the other teacher had helped me with, mm -hmm. I'm able to use that. Like, it'll ask questions like, describe your school, you know, and so I've already written something about what is the mission of early college? What type of students do we serve? And so, you know, you can copy paste. You know those things, right? Yeah. It becomes your elevator speech almost, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And that's stuff you want to know anyway, right? Mm -hmm. This is good. This is good. All right, so let's shift gears. We have an activity um, that I call "Would You Rather." All right. And believe it or not, this is this has been kind of a phenomenon with I think um, school kids nowadays. Where they my daughter comes home some days and she's like, "Dad, would you rather eat a Snickers or a Hershey bar?" I'm just like, "Hmm, well, what's what's going on? I didn't yeah. know it was a thing." But <laughs> but anyway, here's our "Would You Rather." I'll ask you a series of questions. Uh, please um, let me know which one you prefer and. Please give us an explanation as well. No so. problem. <laughs> Would you rather? All right, so here we go. Would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great-great-grandchildren? Hmm. I think I would want to go into the past. And I feel a little funny saying that because my grandmother actually lived to be 100. My great-grandmother lived to be 100. Wow. So I'm like, I already met them. <laughs> but I don't know. I guess I'm scared to know the future. Like, and it messed with my mind or something. Robots, flying cars. I right. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or they look exactly like you. Like, yeah. you act like me a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're mini-me's. Right. Nice. All right. Would you rather be able to talk with the animals or speak all foreign languages? I think I'll have to go with all foreign languages. Nice. Why is that? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like if I could speak to animals, it would be like, I don't know, <laughs> squirrel. You know, it would be like, I don't know. It wouldn't surprise us. But right. I would love to to be able to travel and know what people are saying. And yeah, that's cool. I, I think I would, I would love that one too. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question. For your birthday, would you rather receive cash or gifts? Mm, I think I'd rather receive gifts because if I have cash, I'm probably going to pay bills or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so nothing fun. Uh, right. You know, but gifts will actually be fun. Oh, that's nice. So you had to be forced to spend money on yourself. Exactly. Somebody to give you a gift. Oh, all right. All right. Last one. Uh, would you rather explore space or the ocean? Mm, 
Actually, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Really? So maybe we'll go with space. Nice. Yeah. That, that was fairly easy. You yeah. breeze right through that. Yeah. When I was a kid, actually, I was able to see the space shuttle launches from my house because I grew up in Florida. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And that's why you're an amazing science teacher, thank all you. that experience. All right. So, Ms. Armstead, thank you for joining us today. This has been this has been pretty cool and enlightening and, and informational to others as well. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed my time with you. Awesome, awesome. Well, folks, this includes our episode for today of the Good News Franklin County Schools podcast. If you are listening on your favorite podcasting app, please subscribe and share with a friend. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and share and subscribe. Until next time, remember that there is greatness inside of you. Let it out. Share the good, good news, and we will see you later, everyone. Inspirational, uplifting, altogether good. The Good News, Franklin County Schools.